Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, uh, today back to working on our spiral gear cutting that we've been working on for a really long time now, trying to get everything set up and ready to go. And just as I thought I had everything ready to go, well, I ran into, guess what, a couple of little problems. And we're gonna have to address those today. I don't think it's anything terribly major, but a few things that need to be addressed. And uh, real quickly, two things I'm gonna hit the high spots here, then we're gonna get into the details. First off, this uh, end mill holder that we had on here um, wasn't seating properly and we were getting a little bit of run out in it. It was a little bit beyond what I wanted, so we got a solution for that. Second, and a bigger problem, is that I noticed whenever we were running the head that this plate back here was getting hot. And uh, what's happening is, I think what's happening is, is we've got uh, a, the little gear in there, there's a center piece that presses into it. It sticks out just a little bit on the front, and I think it's making contact with this plate. And uh, as it's running, it's getting hot. We need to get some clearance on that. So that's what we're going to be focusing on today. Uh, let's get in here, get started on it. So this is our first problem. Like we uh, did in the previous video, we made this little stub arbor to fit up in this one inch end mill holder, or inch and a quarter end mill holder, I guess it was. But what I got to noticing was, was that this piece was not pulling in where it was making contact in the socket. It would go in so far and it kind of got stuck. And I actually came in here and, and tried to do some grinding and filing in these corners and cleaning everything up. And no matter what, I think it's actually hitting something back there in the back. But if you look, there's a good bit of play in there. And when we tightened it up, it was tightening up, but it wasn't tightening up on the taper. It was tightening up up here on the front. And we, I just was having a little bit of run out in it. And I was a little bit concerned about that. So my solution was, was I was just gonna go and order a new inch and a quarter in mill holder, just buy a brand spanking new one. They're not that expensive. And while I was looking in the catalog, lo and behold, they had a 40 taper with a stub arbor built into it. This is exactly what I need. This has got the uh, arbor, this is all one piece. This is not a two piece setup like I had. And it was about $10 more than what the, uh, the just the end mill holder was gonna be by itself. And I said, you know what, we're going with that. In fact, had I looked before I built the stub arbor, I probably would have just ordered one of these anyway, but I didn't. Uh, so as you can see, you know, like I said, this is all one piece and uh, it's gonna be just fine. We can put our cutter up on there. I have put this in here, I've snugged it up, and when I snug it up, this, uh, this is running perfectly true or pretty darn close to it within half a thou or so. So I'm real happy with that, and that's gonna take out that little bit of wobble that the original setup was gonna give us. So that one was fairly easy, just cost me a few bucks, no big deal. Now the second issue is a little bit more uh, challenging, but I, th I don't think it's gonna be a big problem. But if you look about right here, this is where the center of that gear comes out. You see this little circle? I was, when I was uh, doing some off camera testing, this thing got really hot. In fact, it got hot enough that it burnt the paint off. It didn't turn red or anything like that. Uh, but I'm like, what is, what is going on? I smelled something. I started coming over here and investigating, and this thing was as hot as a firecracker. So we got some friction going on between that gear that comes out right here uh, and this metal plate on the inside. And I'm pretty sure I know what the problem is. Like I mentioned, I think, just a minute ago, when we put the gear in, I noticed that uh, there's a, a 50 taper centering plug that goes in there, and it actually goes through a hole in the gear and it was sticking out just a little bit. I mean, not much at all, but it was just a little bit proud. And I think that what's happening is, is we just don't have enough clearance there. So I basically just need to take the head off and probably turn that uh, end piece flush uh, with everything. And I think we'll be good to go there. That's what I'm hoping. Uh, but like I said, nothing terribly major, but bad enough we got to pull this head back off. So let's get in here do that and see if we can uh, fix that one little problem. All right, so first thing I wanna do is loosen up these uh, bolts on the top up here that tighten up the uh, overarm supports. And make sure I got these loosened up as well. We are gonna retract 
uh, the arms back in. Now what I want to do is put some tension on the uh, hook up top so that the weight is being carried by the gantry crane. All right, that should just be a little bit there. And see if we can retract these arms. There they come. That's all the way in it is. And now we will release the clamps on the side. That should be far enough. I want to slide these all the way back. This is in a slot and there's a little catch here that catches it and holds it on the dovetail. But I, what I want to do is just pull them back as far as they'll go and I'm just going to snug them down so that they're out of the way. And I'm going to do the same thing over on the other side. So at this point, the head is fully being supported by the crane. What I'm going to do is I'm going to lift it up just a little bit to kind of get it off of that gear back there. And we should now be able to just pull this out and away from the machine and uh, hopefully see what's going on back there. So if I come in here and look, I can see this boss it's sticking out of the gear just a little bit. Let's see how far that's sticking out roughly. So it's about 75 thousandths of an inch. And what I really need is I need for that to be flush with the front of this gear. And I think we'll have all the clearance we need. So I need to turn that down. If you look on the inside of the uh, piece here, you can see where it's actually rubbed and worn down an area in there. And <laughs> I don't know if I did all of that. Some of this looks old. This, we got fresh marks in here, no doubt about it. Uh, but this is probably over years and years of similar things happening in here, but uh, not a problem at all. I may even take and try to clean this up, make sure I got plenty of clearance in there on top of that. I may just take my angle grinder or wire wheel or something, maybe a flap disc and just lightly sand that just to make sure I don't, I have clearance in there. But, uh, right now we need to work on the, the actual gear itself. So here's the problem. It's not a big problem, but it's the problem we're facing right now. We need to machine this face down, face this down so that it's flush with the rest of the gear. No big deal. We can take the gear off, go over to the lathe, chuck it up in there and do it. Uh, but honestly, uh, because I got that whole 50 taper socket in the back, it's not going to be really easy to chuck up in the lathe and uh, without getting run out and having it sticking way out and everything else. It's hard to grip on that taper in the back. Uh, I guess I could grip out here on the face of the gear, but then I got again that 50 taper sticking behind it that's going to probably interfere with the chuck. So I was sitting there thinking, why don't I just do it on the milling machine? So yes, this is a milling machine, but for the time being, we're going to pretend like it's a lathe and we're going to do this. So what I did is I went over and I grabbed my Alora's tool holder. We're just going to bolt this down to the table of the lathe. I can raise the table up, turn the spindle on, go right in there and turn this off right on the mill machine without ever even having to take the gear off. That is my game plan. Let me get this thing bolted down, get my cutter length set out to the proper length and, uh, We'll give it a try. Who knows? K and T milling machine, the next lathe. <laughs> Let's get her done. So I've got a T nut down here in the bottom. I'm just going to put a long stud on this and we'll just drop our lathe tool post over that and put a couple of washers on here to spread that out. And let's tighten her up. All right. We have an Aloris tool block here on our lathe. Need to extend the cutter out. So we'll just uh, loosen these up and reposition that cutter where it needs to be. 
to be able to reach over the face of this. So that should probably be good. And I think I can still catch this back set screw. All right. All right, we're gonna turn the machine on and I wanna raise the table up. We'll just use the power feed for that. Let's bring our cutter in. Need to come up just a little bit more. Just gonna raise it up by hand here. Get that more or less on center there. That's pretty close. All right, I got my spindle speed going about 214 RPMs. Move my cutter over here so I can get a touch off. I'm gonna bring my table in until it touches off. I'm gonna back my cutter back off and let's uh, see how this works. That uh, center part's pretty hard. And I'm a little bit high on the table. So I'm gonna lower the table down just a touch. I'm gonna feed in. Uh, we'll just do about another 20 thou here. I'm just figuring this out as we go here. That's better on my height. Come back across there. Getting down pretty close to that face of that gear here. Let's see how this one cuts. I think my cutter's moving out. I think it's scooting back. It starts taking a pretty heavy cut and then it goes to nothing. Let me uh, see what I can do about that. All right, I have changed the insert out and I have tightened up that tool post. Let's see what happens this time. I need to feed in. Evidently my position changed a little bit. In feed here. And let's try this one. Still turning hard, but it's turning. I'm just going to take a real light pass across there just to clean everything up good. And we should be good. come in here with a rule and it is at least flush may actually be a little bit below the center which is even better so um, I think we're good so now I want to just kind of clean this up this is just really rough I've just got a flap disc on an angle grinder and we're just going to get in here and see what we can do All right, 
right. That should give us a little bit of clearness. And if there's anything rough in there that it was catch on, uh, should have got that cleaned out. So hopefully that'll make the difference between the two adjustments we made. And we are just about ready to put this back together. But before I do, this time I'm going to put a little grease in here. Sure can't go wrong. If there is any contact, at least we'll have some lubrication on it. And I'm going to put a little grease on the uh, gear itself too. All right, that should give us a little bit of lube. I'm just going to snug these right now on this side. Here we go. Snug this side. Now, let's see if we can get our overarms to go back up in there. That'll get everything nice and aligned. And those are pretty much all the way forward. And we'll lock this down. Tighten these up. That should uh, finish snugging this uh, piece up to the face here. engine hoist out of the way and just like that we have her back installed let's uh fire up and uh see i'm gonna slow this thing back down i had it up a little bit higher for the all right let's uh turn it on appears to be working fine it appears to be working fine. I'm going to let it run just a minute or two and just make sure I don't have any heat coming back here on this uh, shaft. But I think we pretty much have that solved. Now we got our new 40 taper uh, spindle here. Go ahead and get it put in here and drawn up tight. And this should give us a, should hopefully eliminate that run out that we were seeing before. Well, I know it will. I've already tested it with an indicator. So, uh, uh, this should do the trick. Ah. See what we'll pull a couple of these bushings out. Put our cutter in here. It's going on tight. Let's see if we can use the screw and pull it up on there. Yeah, it's just uh, just a little tight, but that's good. That means it won't be running out. All right. Let's see what she looks like. I like it. So it looks like there's some run out on the bushings, but I'm looking at the top of the gear and it's, there's no visual run out in that. That's what's important. These bushings have a little bit of play in there. So don't, don't pay too close attention to that. Look out here on the end of the cutter. And uh, that looks really, really good. I think we are ready to put a test piece in there and make a test cut now. And that will be coming up soon. So another thing I want to do while I'm working on this head is I want to make sure I got it really good and properly lubricated. And uh, when I say properly, you need to go look at the manual and find out what this head needs. And I have got five Zerks on here where you use a, like a grease gun. There's one here on the gear. There's three on the top of the head and there's one back here on the back of the head. However, uh, when you go look at the manual, 
it tells how to do this, it will tell you that on the gear and the bearing here in the head, you use grease, but on the ones on the head up here, you should use oil. And it specifically says what kind of oil in this case, it's like a mobile, mobile uh, heavy medium, which is a pretty standard oil I use in a lot of my machines in here. So um, I have got a grease gun that we're gonna grease back here with. And I also have an oil gun. Now, a lot of people may not have one of these or know much about them, but this looks just like a grease gun, but this is actually loaded with a mobile heavy medium. And it works very similar to a grease gun, except instead of injecting grease, it injects oil. Um, really and truly, I probably should take this head apart because more than likely, Somebody in the past has probably put grease in this thing, which is not ideal, but it's probably not the end of the world either. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and put some, some oil in here, make sure we have the proper lubrication in it, uh, and, just, and just go from there. So I need to actually move the head out where I can get to this zerk, we'll get the grease in, and then we will uh, get the other ones uh, oiled. Like I showed in a previous uh, video on this, there's a nut over here or a bolt that you unscrew and uh, that allows you to move the head out. I actually need to tighten these up. This will just uh, snug the head up onto the overarm supports. And this whole head will move forward. There's a drive shaft in here that connects everything. And oh look, there's actually two grease zerks in here. I only saw one. The manual said there was two, but I only saw one, but the manual was right. Both of these get uh, grease, so we'll go ahead and give them a good shot. No telling when the last time this was done. Let's see. All right. Then we'll come in here with the oil gun and we'll uh, put some oil down in here on these. I'm gonna give it a good generous amount because I don't know when the last time this thing was oiled. one more on the back side back here. You guys can't see it, but we'll get it as well. Oh, man, I got oil coming out of the front there. All right. That should be properly lubricated. So there we go, guys. We are set up again. Uh, I did run this for a little while. I don't have any heat up here at all. So that tells me we got plenty of clearance in there. So I'm, that's a lot better. Uh, we got less run out here on our cutter. So I think we are finally ready to make a test cut. So I'm gonna, uh, like I had mentioned in previous video, I'm gonna make a, a dummy gear out of some uh, plastic, some hard plastic that machines real easily. We're going to do some test cuts and just make sure we got our procedure down like we need to and uh, try this whole process out. Once we get it down, we'll actually cut, cut the uh, cast iron gear. And uh, hopefully, finally, I hope we're gonna be able to get this job done and checked off the list. Been a lot of fun, a lot of challenges along the way, uh, but um, hopefully we're gonna get her done. So with that guys, that's gonna be a wrap. As always, thank you so much for watching. Please do subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Thumbs up and comments, uh, greatly appreciate it as always. Uh, hit that bell icon up there to get notifications when new videos are posted and uh, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already as well. Big, huge thank you to all the supporters of the site. As always, the guys who support me on Patreon, PayPal, etc. We could not do everything we do here without all the, the support that comes from you guys, my faithful watchers. So uh, with that, we're gonna sign off and we'll catch you on the next video. Again, thanks for watching.